you usually start a project with like one or two major challenges. And this one, it was everywhere we looked, there was a, something that we had no idea how we were gonna do it. Spider-Wars was such an extraordinary artistic project. It was comic book come to reality, but it has never been done before. So Nuke was the perfect software for that. It gave the artist the freedom to design as the production designer asked for. And he would literally give us the artwork and then he would say, match it. One of the things we wanted to do with this movie is bring the hand of the artist back, bring more of the art back into it. So it's not just the computer, it's the hand of the artist in there as well. Comic books actually are really expressive. Specifically, all the characters' expressions are drawn with line work. And when you have all that line work, it's really easy to create a really definitive emotion. You know, character raises an eyebrow, you just draw that eyebrow. So I wanted to see if there was a way to keep all the line work on a character's face. Nuke is just inherently very adaptable. So every little unique aspect of the show, we would develop a tool. So the artist didn't have to learn a large set of like scripts and templates. It was really a tool set that they could learn and then carry that through the rest of the show. Two of the tools we developed in the show were called the Thresher and the Hatcher, and they kind of worked together. The Hatcher would provide the underlying patterns, so the lines, the dots, um, and allow you to move those on the screen. So you'd have dots that tracked with the character, so you'd see it moving with his cheeks and with his face. And then the thresher would take that pattern and break up the gradients on the image. So you'd get uh, where you have light hitting, you'd get dots, and where you have shadows hitting, patching lines. For us in the texture department, really what we needed to find out was how can we get textures on an insane amount of assets. You know, with typical traditional animation, uh, there's a lot of uh, depth of field, defocusing, things like that. And we didn't necessarily have that luxury on the show because everything on the show, there was no motion blur. So everything that we looked at had a very sharp, crisp quality to it. And that in itself meant that our textures, our surfacing, our painting really needed to stand up to a, a different level. And so Mario was uh, very instrumental in getting all of that done in a very, very efficient way. Katana allows you to create your own packages and expose the parameters to artists that we knew that they needed to interact with. The toughest sequence in the, in the film was the final battle sequence in the Collider in which we had an entire city emerge. At that time, when, when we received those shots, we had about two months left to go on the, on the film. And so a lot of the things that we developed inside of Nuke and Katana um, we're really getting their first heavy testing in this sequence. If we hadn't built the flexibility into Nuke, um, we would have been stuck. There would have been no way for us to get those shots out. The process of making the film was just so unique and seeing how we could take these tools that we had and push them in, in ways we didn't expect. And, you know, an artist would come with, with a look that they just sort of developed on their own and we would say, that looks amazing, let's just, let's just run with it. So it was great.